Welcome back to Briggs on Books. We've talked to people from all over the world today, uh, South Korea, Indiana, San Francisco. Uh, our next guest is from uh, is in somewhere in Florida. Welcome, John. John P. Negra, the you, author. Uh, where are you located, John? I'm in Jacksonville, Florida, Mike. And by the way, here's the cover of your book, Keeping the Faith. Uh, it's quite an intriguing cover in itself. It makes you want to look further just from the cover. But uh, tell us a little about this. Is this a sad story? It's your memoir, right? Well, it, it is my memoir. And, it, well, it's sad, but I think it, it supersedes that as you, as you go along because it's circumstances that I was dealt and how through faith I was able to overcome them. Through faith. Nice. And by the way, you grew up in, we were just talking about, you grew up in the Bronx, and that's where the story is mostly set? Well, I just, the first few years of my life were in the Bronx. The first orphanages that I was in and the first foster homes that I was in in the Bronx. Eventually, I ended up living in uh, Brooklyn, and I pretty much lived in all five boroughs of New York except for Manhattan. <laughs> and one time or another, you got to each one. You got to be in each one. Yes, sir. Now, this yes. is a memoir. Where does it start? Well, it starts at my birth. Um, I was told, it, it, let's be frank, this is a story about abuse, uh, physical, mental, and emotional, and, and how faith was required to survive it. So um, it starts off really at my birth and, the, and, and what surrounded my birth, how my parents met, there's a chance meeting, and it goes from there. Yeah. Now, uh is this a story that you think you share with a lot of different people? Are you all alone in this kind of journey? Well, actually, my older sister is a very big part of this book because she and I were the two that suffered the most, and we can identify. And, you know, we have a wonderful relationship to this day. Okay. Um, when I was living in Puerto Rico for some time, and I decided to come back, and the first place I went was to, was to uh, Pennsylvania where mm -hmm. my sister lives, and it was a nice reunion. Uh, since then, I moved to Florida because my arthritis just got too tough to take at some yeah. point, you know? Um, who's this book written for? Who do you think the audience will be? I think it's for anybody that, well, you know, it's funny because I think my, my book actually has multiple audiences. I think that it appeals to anyone who's dealing with depression, mm -hmm. who has suffered through drug abuse, who, um, and who has been abused in their life. I think that it, it appeals to anyone in those circumstances. Yeah. And that's a lot. That's a lot of people. Yes. And it's and a... I, How's the book come out? I mean, does it come out with a nice inning? Like, hey, this guy, John, he turned out pretty darn good despite all that. Well, let me give you, I'll give you a little bit of an insight. I didn't meet my father until I was 50 years old. Wow. I lost him three years ago. Mm -hmm. And the day that I met him, I began to write this book. And I showed him the first chapter the day after I, he came. Mm -hmm. And he said to me, oh, my God, I'm so proud. One of my sons is a genius. And so <laughs> the relationship that he, he and I had was more like brother than it was father and son. And he is such an instrumental part of my life because prior to meeting him and prior to writing the book, I had suffered 45 years of depression. Wow. Yeah. Some people think depression is just getting the blues, but it's a real thing. It's a real th uh, illness. I had gotten to a point, uh, Michael, honestly, I was having nightmares. I couldn't sleep. I was constantly crying. It was probably the worst time of my life. Mm -hmm. And I take you through it in the book from the eyes of a child as I was and dealing with the circumstances around me, how I reason, and then through faith and understanding and learning, I started to see it in a more positive light. I started to think, it can't all be like this. There has to be something good ahead. So all I have to do is hang on. Mm -hmm. And I started to read the Bible, and I started to really understand what faith meant. And to be honest with you, to this day, I start every single day on my knees, and that's the way I end every day. When did this, now the book goes... You're really young when the, the, all this drama, orphanages, foster homes. Uh, when did the faith journey start? Well, I was punished. As you, as you can read in the book, there was a punishment that I suffered from my mom. And uh, I was locked in my room for an entire summer. Mm. And the only, I was only allowed to read. That was all I was. I wasn't even allowed. To, I was only allowed to leave to go to the bathroom and to read. That was it. So my mother threw a Bible in the room and a bunch of other books. And I left the Bible for last. I read Treasure Island. I read a bunch of other books because it was, she had one of those giant Bibles that you get at a wedding. It was yeah. huge. So I was like, this is intimidating. And I started reading it, and I fell in love. I couldn't put it down. Yeah. And I read it cover to cover. Then years later, I read it again cover to cover. Mm -hmm. And I started to, I think my favorite part is Psalms, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. If you want to go biblical, I think that's my favorite book of the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, I know we all know some Psalms, and it's a very peaceful thing to read. Uh, right. And then, uh, so how, about how old were you? You were a teenager then? Well, it all starts at my birth, to be honest with you. I was given away at birth and put into foster homes, uh, in a, an orphanage, actually. And my dad started to see me for about three to four years, and he just stopped coming because he was so depressed that he had no power to take me out. Yeah. So I lost communication with him, and I don't remember him at all until I met him again when I was 50. Now, my mother had told me, which was a, a lie that she had told me, was that uh, she had to give me up because of a nervous breakdown when I was four. But mm. I remember meeting her at the age of seven and knowing I had never met this woman before. So mm. all my life, I kind of knew it was false. And the day I met my father, he gave me the actual lowdown of what happened on the day that she dropped me off at his doorstep. Mm. <laughs> Now, the, there is a kind of a full circle here. You ended up having uh, kids of your own. In fact, I have a picture of one here, uh, your yeah. middle son, I think. That's my middle son, Joshua, who is uh, just finishing his, uh, his enlistment in the Army. He's going home next week. He served uh, honorably and, and uh, distinguished, and uh, I'm very proud of him. That's good. I also have two other sons. My oldest boy is John Salvatore, and it's funny because his birthday is 316, so he's John 316. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> now, will people get to see the full story? I mean, does, do your kids and you growing up and having a family of your own, does that come in the book? Yes, it does. And, and you know, when you don't have a foundation in life, which is how I started out, you have to make it up as you go along. And unfortunately, uh, but I guess fortunately, too, people ask me all the time, well, how can if you hadn't been abused, what kind of person would you be? And I tell them, you know something, I can't tell you that. Right. I can tell you that I'm the man that I am today because of what I want. Yeah. So it's kind of hard to say. But yes, the book has a very happy ending. You see how I changed, how I, mm -hmm. even though I myself got myself into drugs and, 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 and an addiction, I understood all the time that this wasn't the end. And God made a personal yeah. appearance in my life to stop wow. that from happening, which is also detailed in the book. That's in the book, yeah. <laughs> I'm just anxious to read how, you know, with the childhood you went through, what kind of father you turned out to be. Well, you know, it's interesting that you say that because all my life, I, I knew after the beatings I would get and the punishments, I said, my kids are never going to see a day of this. Yes. And hand to God, I was able to keep that promise and break those chains. And that's what this book is about, like that's, breaking chains. Yeah. I haven't read it yet, and I'm inspired. What formats is it? Is it on an audio book or? Uh, yes. It, well, I don't know if it's on audio, but I do know that it's available on ebook, e hardcover, and paperback, and you can get it at Amazon, Kindle, or um, Barnes and Noble. Yeah, I like to. Uh, I don't read fantasy books. I like to read real life, you know, memoirs and biographies and stuff like that. So I'm very attracted to this book, and uh, I just appreciate you're very brave to write it, by the way. And uh, I, thank, thank you very much. Was it, it kind it's, of it's, was it kind of therapeutic to get it out? I was just going to say that it was the best thing I ever did because even before I published or anything else, just writing it took this weight off of my shoulders. Yeah. I can't even describe it, Mike. I, and I'm being perfectly honest. It was a situation where I think it extended my life by mm. writing this out. Wow. I really do. Because that weight is just gone. Yeah. And I'm a new man now. And I owe it to my dad. And he was the inspiration. That's great. Came all the way around. Now, I would say to our viewers, uh, man, what a great gift this would be for people who have maybe had a little rough time and, and uh, uh, an inspi inspiration of them. So don't when you go to Amazon, don't click once. Click five times, order five copies of it, and give it away. I love to give books and be reading the books at the same time as other people. So I recommend to our viewers uh, to do that. Uh, any last thoughts for our viewers about you or the book, John? Well, I'd like to, if I could give a shout out to somebody who helped me along. On LinkedIn, which is, you know, it's a platform for professionals, I met an actress whose name is uh, Adelina Sanui. Mm -hmm. And I gave her my book, and she, I said, I'd love to hear what you thought. She called me back two days later, read it in two days, and she said to me, John, here's the quote that is my favorite. I like to think of faith almost as though it were a piece of clothing that I put on every day. Mm -hmm. Remember, you have to dress for the weather, and faith is perfect for any kind of weather. Beautiful. That is beautiful. So, uh, any Thank chance you. this might turn into a little movie or something? Well, I, you know something, my publisher honestly told me when he read the book, he said, John, I've read this book in two days. He goes, I believe this could be a blockbuster. He says he'd like to partner with me. I mean, it's a small operation, the publisher, but I do believe what he says. Yeah. And I have this uh, connection, as I mentioned, and I'm going to try because I feel like God didn't make this happen for nothing. He brought me this far, and, it's, and I'm going to see it through to the end. Yeah, you know... Um when somebody says, I read it in two days, then somebody else says, I read it in two days, that means it's one of those books you can't put down. 
That's what everyone has told me. They just couldn't put it down. Couldn't put it down. All right. Uh, John P. Negron in uh, somewhere, Jacksonville, Florida. Is that where you are? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. I want to talk to you again. You're a fascinating person and inspirational, too. So we'll have you back you. on the show. Thank you so much, Mike. And for our viewers, don't go anywhere. We'll be back with more authors right after this.